Hi, everybody. My name is Margaret, and I hate airplanes. Unlike most people with aerophobia, I have a pretty tangible reason for it. Once, I almost lost my life during the flight. Actually, I haven't flown a lot. Still, that horrible flight wasn't my first one. Before that, I flew a couple of times with my parents when we traveled during vacations. And everything was fine. I've got a good vestibular system and never suffered from sea or mountain sickness. I used to think that I'm not afraid of anything. I've never even thought I'd become a victim of aerophobia. My friends and I once even jumped with a parachute out of interest. Everything went great. One moment, you're still on the plane, and the next moment, You fly high above the ground, and then you pull the ripcord on your parachute, and the whole world spreads before you as a gigantic carpet. That was truly a precious experience. I also participated in mountaineering activities. Our whole family, my parents and I, went to the mountains. I'm not an avid mountaineer, but my mom and dad enjoy climbing immensely. Together, We climb quite difficult slopes, and there were zero problems, as they often write in the paperbacks. I used to laugh at the face of danger. It's probably not very healthy, but my mom and dad brought me up with such a spirit. I used to think I was a strong person, and nothing really could break me. Well, until that time, my friend and I had an urgent flight to a summer camp. She was shaking like a leaf, so I had to calm her down. I've told her a dozen times that I conquered Elbrus and survived, and it was far more scary than a mere flight. I've flown a lot before. There was really nothing to be afraid of. Unfortunately, my friend scarcely listened to me. It was the first flight in her life, and she was sure that something horrible was bound to happen. She even told me she'd seen a prophetic dream the day before. I had to remind her that we weren't the characters of Final Destination or another similar movie. Statistically, cars are far more dangerous than planes, but no one is afraid to drive. Maybe my words weren't all that convincing, but she stopped panicking and got silent. Better than nothing, the first half of the flight was uneventful. The plane flew, the passengers slept, clouds pranced in the portals, and sometimes I caught a glimpse of the ocean very far below. My friend sat for some time with her eyes closed and then fell asleep. As for me, I simply listened to music, and then the plane twitched. The stewardess told us it was just an air pocket, but then the plane twitched again. And after that, it began to shake. The stewardess was right. Planes fall into air pockets all the time, and nothing bad happens. But when the plane began to shake, panic rose in the cabin. Now it was really creepy. People began to scream, cling to chairs, and even pray. At that time, I was trying to understand what was really happening. I've encountered air pockets before, and that was surely not an air pocket. Then I looked at the stewardess once again and immediately understood we were in trouble. She was very afraid, but didn't show it. The plane continued to shake. All the passengers started to panic. The blood had drained from my friend's face. She was trying to find the oxygen mask. I slowly exhaled several times, then stood up and helped her. Then I had to help two more passengers: a young woman who was just a little bit older than me, and her small child. Those passengers who remained adequate helped their neighbors, but there were those who acted worse than animals. For example, one man just seized the stewardess' seat, telling her to get lost. He was completely sure that she had the safest place with maximum protection built in. A little bit later, 
The same man had to defend the seat from other unstable people who wanted to wrestle the safest seat off of him. Some people were trying to break into the business class, thinking that the rich would be protected and saved no matter what. I have no idea why they thought so. If the plane did crash, all the passengers would still end up as lifeless bodies, including those from the business class. Everything looked so grim that some straight up started crying. I am so calm now because everything has already passed long ago and only exists only as a memory. During the incident, I panicked as well and remember everything only in flashes. I tried to stay serious, but at the moment realized that tears were running down my cheeks all the time and my hands were violently trembling, and there was nothing I could do about it. I also remembered that I was worried about my parents. Dad had heart problems, he couldn't take the tension, and bad news about my flight would simply destroy him. For some reason, I haven't thought about how unfair it was to say goodbye to life at the age of 16 or some other similar crap. Nope. I kept thinking about my parents or outright imagining something weird. Through the portholes, I saw how the ocean below was getting closer. At that moment, some sort of timer activated within my head and started the countdown. No glimpses of past lives, no tears or regret, just the countdown. Nothing more. Time in my head was similar to clefsidra drops. I wasn't in fact afraid. Of course, I'm not a supergirl from some squad of fearless supergirls. You see, fear is the reaction that warns of danger. When you are scared, you see a chance to survive. And I felt only hopelessness. I just sat and waited for everything to end. At least my soul would be able to fly off and search for a better world. The other passengers engaged in screaming, crying, fighting, or marauding. I was sure nothing of that would help them. Just before we were going to hit the ocean, I noticed that my friend had lost her consciousness. To my mind, it was only for the better. She would leave the world and not feel any impact at all. But at the very last moment, a miracle happened. I don't actually know what saved us. I guess the pilots finally managed to resume control of the plane. The funny thing is that people did not immediately notice it and continued to yell and cry. The stewardesses, however, were already running somewhere deep into the cave, and those who sat near the portholes muttered something nonstop. I personally repeated only two words, over and over. Those were, thank you. Even now, I don't really know whom I was talking to. To be honest, the effect of the sudden rescue was unexpected. The films show us storms of applause, fraternization with pilots, or even a fat sorcerer materializing in the middle of a salon with a rabbit in his hat. But here it was, fast and sudden. One moment, everyone was yelling, and the next moment, people were already pretending that nothing had happened. No marauder tried to apologize. No one tried to somehow justify their actions. Only those who were helped by their neighbors said thanks and smiled. The rest, as always, just pretended that nothing had happened. I don't remember how exactly we landed and how I got home. My head turned on about three days later. And all this time, I saw and heard everything like through a thick fog. I did something, communicated, ate, and even seemed to be adequate. At least no one sounded the alarm. And then I suddenly understood what exactly happened to me. My parents found out about everything from the newspapers. 
I was already too unstable when the whole story appeared in the news. Sad thing is that people who robbed women of their oxygen masks and took the chair off of a stewardess described themselves as heroes and boasted how bold they were. It looked disgusting, and it was also a lie. But nobody cared. Now, I have definitely become more careful. The previous me would have called the present me a coward. I prefer to use the term due diligence. Why seek danger if it still comes when it pleases and takes its toll? True, the rest of my friends and parents really don't understand me now. Only the girl who was with me on that flight can relate to me. Now, we've become true friends. I'm fine now. At least, I think so. I still avoid airplanes, but I tell others that I really love trains. They don't really believe I enjoy sitting face to face to a bunch of people in a metal cage every day. Some even are actively trying to understand me. Thank you guys. Tell me in the comments whether you experienced something like this. How did you manage to cope with your fear later? Share the video with your thrill-seeker friends and try to avoid excessive danger.